What's going on guys, John Elder here from Codemy.com and in this video, I'm going to show you how to save your info to dat files instead of databases for Kenter and Python. Alright guys, like I said in this video, we're going to look at saving our data to dat files instead of databases. But before we get started, if you like this video, want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out Codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. That's all my courses, videos, and books for one time fee at just $49, which is insanely cheap. Okay, what are DAT files? DAT files are basically usually binary files that you can store information in. They're kind of hard to open, so it's not like a text file where anyone can just open it. And they're good for storing data, all kinds of different data. And Python makes using DAT files really easy. And so it's very easy with Kenter. And a lot of times you just have a little bit of information to save, maybe a registration number, maybe a uh, password or something, and maybe some user information. You want to save their address to a file. You don't want to use a whole database for it because that's, you know, hugely overkill and complicated and, and, you know, just annoying. Now I've got lots of videos on using databases with Kenter. You can check the playlist uh, with a link in the comment section below. But if you just have a few things to save or certain data that you want to save, using a DAT file can be really, really easy. So that's what we're going to look at in this video. I'll show you several different ways uh, to save different types of data in this video. We'll use a list box, we'll use a text box, and you know, you should be able to get the idea from there. So, uh, you know, I've got here, we can, this is the list from the last video we did with the dependent drop downs. We have shirt sizes, small, medium, and large. We've got a list box here. We can save this to a file. Uh, we can delete all this stuff and then we can open that file and it pops back up just that easy. So that's what we're going to look at in this video. So I've got a file called save underscore dat dot pi using the sublime text editor and the git bash terminal as always. And I just kept this Python list from the last video. Uh, it's just a Python list with our small, medium and large sizes, just so we have something to put in a list box when that time comes, uh, just so we don't have to copy and paste that again from the last video. But let's start out by creating a text box. You know, we've we've done with text boxes before. This will work with entry boxes as well. Uh, but let's just do a text box. I'm gonna call it my underscore text. And this is gonna be a text widget. We wanna put it in root. And let's give this a width of, I don't know, 20 and a height of like 10, just to kind of see what it looks like. And let's go my underscore text dot pack, give this a pad Y of 20, just push down the screen. Now let's just run this real quick to make sure this looks okay. So let's go Python save underscore dat dot pi. And when we do, we see we just get this little box here. And okay, maybe we want to make this bigger, but you get the idea. It doesn't really matter. Uh, we don't really care about making a cool text box. I've got lots of videos on uh, building out text box. There's a whole playlist on, or there's a whole section of the playlist where we make a text editor. Maybe we can look at that if you're not familiar with text widgets. And okay, I'll make this 40 to make it a little bit bigger. So, okay, now let's create a button. So I'm just going to call this my underscore button one, and it's a button. We want to put it in root, we want the text to equal save file. And let's give this a command of save underscore file. And let's create another one. We'll call this my button two. And this one will be open file. And for the command, we'll call this open file. Okay, so we need to create a couple of functions for save file and open file. So let's define a save file. And for now, I'm going to pass. And let's also define open file. And again, I'm going to pass. So like I said, saving data to dat files and opening dat files is really, really easy with Python using something called the pickle module. And the pickle module just does what I just said, it opens and closes saves and loads data from dat files. So to use this, we need to import pickle. All right. This comes with a Python. We don't have to download it and install it, but you do have to import it. So, okay. So let's save the file first. So we need to get our data from our Kinter app into a variable that we can then save. So I'm just going to call this stuff, right? It's the stuff we want to save. And I'm going to set this equal to my underscore text dot get. And we want to get everything from the 1.0 position to end. Remember with like list boxes and entry boxes, they start at zero, but text boxes for some reason start at 1.0. So, all right, we want to grab everything in our text box from 1.0 to the end of the text box and assign it to this variable called stuff. 
And so let's say grab the stuff from our text box. Okay, now let's define a file name. What do we wanna save this as? Now you can do this hard coded like this, or you can use a file dialog box to create the name yourself. I've got lots of videos on using the file dialog box for just that purpose in the playlist. So you can check those out if you want, just for sort of to make this easier, I'm just gonna hard code this in here. And let's just call this file name, right? Now we can say we wanna save this as dat stuff. Now, normally these dat files end in dot dat, but here you don't have to put it like this. Now this is a relative path. This will save this dat stuff file in the same directory where this entire file is sitting, which is our, uh, let's see, C backslash GUI directory, right? If you wanna put it in a separate directory, we could do that too. We could say, say we had a directory called data. We do that. And just for fun, we can come back over here and we can mkdir data to make that directory and make sure it's sitting there. And now if we ls, we could see there it is in this directory. So, okay, we're good to go there. If you don't create it, it'll probably create it for you, but don't quote me on that. So we're gonna save it into directory data. We're gonna call it dat stuff. So, okay, there's our file name. So now we need to open the file. So we wanna open this file and then put stuff into it, right? So to open a file, we create another variable and I'm just gonna call this output file. Call it anything you want, really doesn't matter. And now we're gonna set this equal to open. Now we wanna open, what do we wanna open? We wanna open this file name file. So we put that in there. Now, how do we wanna open this? We wanna open this as WB. And w, WB stands for write binary. We wanna write this as a binary file. And binary is, you know, ones and zeros. So if we open this, it's just gonna be gobbledygook. It's not gonna be like a text file. This is a binary file. And it's almost like a little program. So, okay, we do that. Now, the file is open. Now we need to actually add the data to the file. And this is where pickle comes in. So we just call pickle.dump. We just wanna dump everything from here. This is our variable that's holding our data, right? We just, so we put that there. And where do we wanna dump it? We wanna dump it into this open file right here. So we just do that. So, okay, that should do the trick. Now, if you wanted to, you could make a little prompt that pops up, a little text box that says, you've saved successfully, or you know something in a status bar or something. We're not gonna bother with that. I'll leave that to you if you wanna do that. If you don't know how to do that, check the playlist. I've got tons of videos on stuff like that. So that is all there is to it. One, two, three, four lines of code, very simple. This WB is the only weird thing, and that just stands for write binary, and we're good to go. So now let's open our file. We've saved it. Now we want to open it. So again, I'm just going to kind of grab this. So we want to define our file name. What file do we want to open? We want to open that data slash data stuff file. And again, we need to open the file, right? So to do that, let's create another variable. Instead of output file, let's call this, I don't know, input file. And we set this equal to, again, we wanna open. What do we wanna open? We wanna open this file name, file, which is just this thing, right? And this time, instead of write binary, we don't wanna write anything to this file, we wanna read binary. We wanna read the stuff in the file, right? So, okay, piece of cake there. So now, we need to load the data from the file into a variable so that we can do stuff with it, right? So again, I'm just gonna call this stuff. We wanna set the stuff equal to uh, pickle.load. And what do we wanna load? We wanna load this input file. And that's it. So if we want, we could then, let's for instance, just print stuff, right? So this will print the stuff to the terminal just so we can see what we're getting back from the file. What format is it in? It might be interesting to see. So we'll go ahead and do that. Now we've got this stuff. What do we want to do with it? Well, let's output it into our text box. So output to text box. So we can call my text dot insert. And we want to put this at position 1.0 right at the beginning. And what do we want to insert into it? We want to insert this stuff, right? So 
Okay, so let's go ahead and save this and run it. See what kind of a hash we made of this. Uh, but it's pretty simple. I don't think we made any mistakes. So Python save underscore dat dot pi. Uh oh, we did make a mistake. Not even starting out yet. Our text boxes, we forgot to pack them. <laughs> so my underscore button one uh, dot pack. And let's give this a pad y of like 20. I'm just going to copy this guy and do button two. Okay, let's go ahead and save this and run it. Now, keep my mouth shut this time. Okay, so this is a test of stuff. All right, so now if we save this file, again, there's no prompts here showing us that it saved it, but if I delete all this stuff and now we try to open the file, boom, pops right back in. Very cool. And now when we close this, remember we printed whatever stuff was to the terminal. So we can see it's just sending it back in this sort of raw format that it got it in for the text box. Now this will change for a list box, but for a text box, it just spits it out just like that. So very cool and just that easy. And if we wanted to open a file explorer real quick, let me pull this up. So we can go in our GUI directory, see GUI, and then there's our data directory. And you can see that underscore stuff is sitting there. And if we try to double click to open it, it doesn't even know what kind of file to open it as. If we try to open it as a notepad, for instance, we get uh, sort of works, right? But it's got weird symbols and you know, it's just, this is not a cool file to be dealing with. So it makes a good way to store data. So just that easy and uh, really, really cool. So that's text box. We can do the same thing with, for instance, a list box if we want. So let's come up here and instead of a text box here, I'm gonna comment this out and comment this out. Let's create my underscore list. And that's gonna be a list box. We wanna put it in root. And that's my underscore list dot pack. Give this a pad Y of like 20 to push it down the screen. Now let's insert these things into our list box. So let's go for item in sizes. We want to my underscore list dot insert at the end, the item. Okay, so let's go ahead and save this and run it just to make sure that looks okay. And it does, we get our basic list box and there's no scroll bar, but you can add a scroll bar or whatever. All right, so, okay, that works. Now let's also create a delete button down here. So I'm just gonna copy this and let's call this my button three and let's pack this onto the screen while we're thinking about it. And instead of open file, let's call this delete items and let's call this delete underscore items. And let's make this delete items function real quick. Let me just do it right here. Delete from list box. So let's define delete items and let's just go my underscore list dot delete. And we wanna delete everything from zero to end. So let's go ahead and save this and run it just to make sure that worked. So we've got stuff in here, boom, we can delete them. Okay, so now all we have to do is save and open this stuff. So let's go ahead and save this. And we can, again, call my stuff, but instead of my text.get, this is gonna be my underscore list.get from zero to end. We wanna grab all the stuff in our list box. We want to save it, and the rest is the same. And now to open this, again, we want to pull all the stuff out of here. And now let's output it to the list box. And for here, let's just go for item in stuff, right? Which is what we loaded all of the stuff from the file into this variable. So here we just want to loop through and add each item in the thing one at a time to our list box. So we can just go my underscore list dot insert and we wanna insert it at the end of the list. And what do we wanna insert? Whatever the item is. So that's that thing right there. And again, let's print out that stuff to the terminal afterwards just to see what is getting returned to us from the dat file for a list box. It's gonna be different than a text box. It's kind of interesting. So, okay, let's go ahead and save this and run it. We ran through that kind of fast. So we've got all of these things in our text box. Now let's save the file. Okay, so it's saved. 
Now let's delete these items. Now let's open it again. And when we do, boom, they're added back to the list box. You'll notice they're one per line, which is what you would want. And the dat file has kept track of each separate item and it's put them on a line separately, which is really, really cool. Now, if we close this, we'll see it's returning a tuple. So it determined when you added it, pickle, I suppose, determined that the data should be tupleized. It's basically a Python list. And that's how it's keeping track of each individual item in our list box. It's adding them to the dat file as a tuple, and then it's bringing them back out as a tuple that we can then loop through in our code, which was what we did right here, and add each one of those tuple items to the text box or to the list box, just like that. So really, really simple to use dat files. And I can't tell you what kind of data to use dat files with. You know, if you've got a lot of stuff, lots of records for lots of customers or something like that, you're gonna wanna use a database. If you have just a small amount of text, or like I said, a registration number that you need to keep track of for your app, you know, you give, you give a customer a registration number, they use it to log into your app. You wanna save that registration number in a dat file maybe. That might be a good use for it. Or, you know, if you've got a text box and you just wanna save the text to a dat file, you do it like that, that would work. Uh, things like that, but uh, be creative. Think about different ways you can use a dat file much easier than using a database. We don't have to import a database. We don't have to set up a database connection. We don't need to, you know, go through all the SQL stuff that databases you have to deal with. It's always complicated. This is just super easy. Use the pickle library and it just works. Now I mentioned earlier, really quickly, we'll talk about this. What kind of stuff can you save with pickle and dat files? You can, you can save booleans, uh, so true or false. You can, you can save integers, so numbers. You can save floats, so decimals. You can uh, save complex numbers. You can save strings. So if you've got a string of data of some sort, you can save that in a dat file with pickle. You can save tuples, you can save lists, you can save dictionaries as we've seen throughout here. So basically with our text box, we were saving a string of data. Uh, with the list box, we were saving essentially a tuple and a uh, Pickle supports that with dat files just natively. We don't even have to tell it, hey, we're using a string or hey, we're using a, a tuple. It figures it all out on its own. And they're really, really cool. So uh, check out Pickle, check out dat files, think about different ways you can use them. And uh, it's a lot of fun. So that's all for this video. If you'd like to be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm and check out codingme.com where you can use coupon code YouTube one to get $30 on membership. So you pay us $49 to access all my courses, over 47 courses, hundreds of videos and the PDFs of all my best selling coding books. Join over 100,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codingme.com and I'll see you in the next video.